you use enzyme therapy to treat cancers. Can you talk about what that is and how exactly that works? Yeah. Um, Dr. Beard was an embryologist working at the University of Edinburgh, and he, through a complicated series of events, that would, uh, I've given three-hour lectures on him, realized that pancreatic enzymes, I'm not going to do that today, I promise, <laughs> realized pancreatic enzymes have an anti-cancer effect. Now, pancreatic enzymes had been discovered in 1858 by Kuhn, K-U-H-N-E, who was a German scientist who first isolated uh, trypsin, which is the main pancreas enzyme that digests protein. And by 1900, pancreatic enzymes were well characterized. They were the proteolytic enzymes, which simply digest proteins in the small intestine, amylytic, which digest carbohydrates, and lipolytic, that break down uh, fats. And they were well known. And they were thought to have only a digestive function. But Dr. Beard said, yeah, they do help with digestion, of course. But in addition, they represent the body's main defense against cancer and would be useful as a cancer treatment. In the years between 1902 and 1911, he put his thesis to the test. He did animal studies. You know, we think of 100 years ago as a primitive time in science. They were very sophisticated. They had laboratory models, animal models for cancer, which he used. He had clinical studies going where he showed clearly the enzymes reverse cancer. Uh, unfortunately, Madame Curie at the same time had already won two Nobel Prizes and was a media star. She was the first great modern science media star. She knew how to manipulate the media. And she announced to the world that x-rays, which had just been discovered in 1895, would be the simple, easy way of getting rid of cancer from the face of the earth. She said, it's simple, it works for all cancers, it's non-toxic. Unfortunately, as brilliant as he was, she was, despite two Nobel Prizes, she was completely wrong. First, most cancers don't respond to radiation. Even when they do respond, they often come back more aggressively. And it isn't non-toxic. In fact, she died from aplastic anemia brought on by the overexposure to radiation. In fact, her laboratory journals are so radioactively toxic that you can't approach them at the University of Paris where they keep them unless you have protective clothes on, you know, 100 years later. And she died as the result of radiation exposure. But by the time all of that was known, Beard was already dead and gone. So his work was totally lost to the world, unfortunately. Mm. But he was absolutely right. Enzymes, we believe, are the main defense against cancer. All our successes because we treat patients with large doses of pancreatic enzymes. We use a pig source because the pig pancreatic enzymes are most like the human, so they work best in the human as opposed to Lamb will work, but not as well as pig. They're made for us in New Zealand. They really work. And we've done animal studies as well as you know basic clinical studies that show they work. What does a patient go through when they when they go through that therapy? Well, from what I've read, it's a basically just taking a lot of capsules. Well, it's each a three day. part. It's a three part therapy involves individualized diet, individualized supplement protocols with large doses of enzymes and detoxification routines like the infamous coffee enemas. Every patient that comes into our office gets a specific diet individualized for their needs. A lot of alternative doctors have one diet. Mm -hmm. We don't. We have 10 basic diets that range from pure plant-based nuts, seeds, grains to an Atkins-type red meat diet. Where we literally put people on red meat two or three times a day and dozens of variations of the diet. Each diet is individualized. Second, large doses of vitamins, minerals, trace elements. We use some glandular extracts from animal organs like liver and heart or thymus. We believe the vitamins, minerals, trace elements have a supportive function. They're not curative for cancer, but they help the body work better. And then for cancer, we use large doses of enzymes. And the third component would be the detoxification routines like the coffee enemas. Now, as, a, as the body repairs and rebuilds on our program, as cancer cells break down, a lot of toxic debris is released. You know, we live in a very toxic environment. Mm. There are over 79,000 synthetic chemicals being released into the environment. Even if you eat organically in New York City, there, there's heavy metals and mercury in the air. If you breathe in, I live in New York, I'm breathing in mercury. There are pesticides in New York, even though it's not agricultural, you know, it's a city, but they waft in on the wind currents from the, from the west. And you live in New York, you're breathing pesticides and heavy metals. A lot of those toxic chemicals get stored in their cells where they sit like a ticking time bomb. On the program with all the good nutrition, every cell gets the signal to start house cleaning. And they start dumping these stored toxins in the bloodstream, they're filtered in the liver and the kidney, and the body gets rid of them also. Tumors are very abnormal, and they produce all kinds of molecules that are foreign and toxic to normal healthy tissue. So when the enzymes start breaking down a tumor, you get all those dead tumor waste, it's going to be extremely toxic. In fact, oncologists have recognized a syndrome called tumor lysis syndrome. When chemo shrinks a tumor too quickly, t chemo will work and shrink the tumor some of the time. If you break a tumor down too fast, orthodox oncologists have said you can kill the patient from the dead tumor waste. They call it tumor lysis syndrome, which lysis just means break down the cells and you can cause uh, hepatic liver failure or kidney failure. So Dr. Kelly developed a series of procedures like coffee enemas that seem to help the body mobilize, neutralize, and excrete all this toxic junk from the repair of the normal tissues and the breakdown of the tumor. And the coffee enemas come right out of the conventional medical literature. They were in the Merck Manual, which is a textbook of conventional medicine, right up until the 1970s. And he got it right out of the, even though he was criticized for using them, he got it right out of the orthodox conventional literature. 
and they just help the liver and the kidney work better. So it's, you know, you, the patient comes into us, we put them on a diet, we design their supplement protocol, we teach them how to do the coffee enemas, we use other detoxification routines, we have a liver flush, colon cleanses, juice fast things that we use, depending on the patient. Mm.